this is for element 1. So now we can see that we have our f1x, f2x, our u1 and u2. We know that u2 equals 0 from a fixed support. And our u2, at this point, we would have solved for it already. Um, if you would have watched my last video, what you want to do is solve for your nodal displacements first. I'm just going to give you the value, um, but watch my previous video where I actually um, solve for all of the displacements and the external loads. And I don't solve for the internal react of the internal force. So this video is just for internal forces strictly. So um, u1 equals zero and u2 from my previous video is equal to 0 0.12 okay so again watch my previous video where I got this from and where this came from so you always want to solve for your displacements first otherwise you can't proceed with uh, with your problem so rewriting this remember that's the first node due to the first member and the second node due to the first member okay so now we've set up our first matrix our first uh, system here of linear equations and now all we want to do is solve for our internal forces right so literally we have everything we need to know all we need to do is matrix multiplication and solve our system so matrix multiplication when you know that we take first component times the first vector plus the second just like linear algebra, right? So dealing with f1 of x, f1 due to the first member equals 100 times 0. So that is equal to negative 12 kilonewtons. Similarly, we have f2 of x due to member 1 is equal to positive 12 kilonewtons. Solve for the internal reactions due to the second element. Remember, our k is still the same, so our stiffness matrix is going to be still 100. And we have u2 and u3. So we have u2 and u3 now because if you look at our picture, our node 2 looks something like this. Right, we have our k2, and we have a displacement at u2 and a displacement at u3. And we already know from a previous video that u2 is 0 0.1204. 0 so again, watch my previous video where I solve for these values with the same system of springs. And I solved again for the nodal displacements and also the reaction forces. Okay, so now we can rewrite this with our unknowns and in our matrix form. So because we have, we're at, F, at our second node, we have an internal force 2x due to 2, right? Second node, second member, an internal force at 3x due to 2 as well. So remember this is the second member and the second node, second member, third node, right? And again, same matrix u2, 0 0.12, and u3. Now, same thing what we did for the first element, we just do matrix multiplication and solve for our internal forces. So we have f2, x due to second member. So the internal force is going to be 8 kilonewtons from the second node on the second member. So now the third node from the second member, matrix multiplication, right? Equal and opposite, negative eight and eight. So that makes sense, everything balances out. We are good. So then this is second set of answers. And now finally we need to deal with our element three now, right? So one more time, stiffness matrix for element three. We know at element 3 we have um, our third node connecting our fourth node, right? And we have our k2 
is equal to 200. The k is different now. And we have our u3 is equal to 0 0.04. Again, from a previous video, check it out so you understand where those values came from. And u4 is equal to 0. So our stiffness matrix K3 is now it's different because we have a different because we have a different spring constant, right? So now I'm putting this in the form of F equals KU. We have our internal force at node 3 element 3 or internal force at node 4 element 3 right so we have our node 3 node 4 and this is our element number 3 so these are the internal forces that we're looking for and those are equal to Using the little matrix again, it's equal to this. And now all you need to do is matrix multiplication one more time. So the internal force at node 3 due to member 3 is 8 kilonewtons. And now the internal force at node 4 due to member 3 is equal to negative 8 kilonewtons. So now we've solved the internal forces of our truss system. Um, and this is basically all you can do now, solving for these types of problems. Because in a previous video, we solved for our nodal displacements, our U's, right? In the previous video, check it out. Solve for my U's and also the support reactions. And now finally, we have taken all the information that we've, that we've solved and we have now found our internal, our internal forces at each of the nodes. All right. So that's basically all you can do. This problem has now been solved. Okay, so I've made a bit of an error here. So it seems like F4 is actually eight kilonewtons. F4 was eight kilonewtons, which makes sense. Okay, because now everything balances out. So the F4 was eight kilonewtons, and as we can see here, our F4 is 8 kilonewtons, so everything works out. Everything balances out. We're now in equilibrium. So thanks for watching. Uh, check out my website at everythingeng.com.